Hey guys, it's Calvin, and before all y'all start tripping over the thumbnail, yes, that is an iPhone on the thumbnail. Why am I using an iPhone to display an Android app? Well, I don't have an Android device. <laughs> and I know half y'all just gonna stop watching the video right now, but for the other half, we're gonna go ahead and jump in and start this tutorial. So we're actually gonna build this pretty groovy looking Hello World app on this Android emulator using a relative layout and a text view and some custom fonts, a custom color, and all that fun stuff to build this really cool, very simple app. So let's actually go ahead and get started. So I'm gonna close this preview down because we know what it's gonna look like. I already started Android Studio and up here in the application name, I'm just gonna call it Groovy World instead of Hello World, right? So you can actually store this project wherever you would like. I'm just gonna store it here and I'm gonna go ahead and click next. And I'm gonna leave the default settings here, our minimum API level is going to be 15, which is ice cream sandwich. And I'm gonna go ahead and click next. And then here I'm actually gonna start an empty activity. So I'm gonna keep empty activity selected, hit next. And I'll just go ahead and leave the activity and layout names as they are and hit finish. So at this point, Android Studio and the Gradle is going to start building your project. So you're just going to have to wait a little bit just to get it to load. So there we go. This project is up and running. The default activity here is main activity. I'm actually just going to go ahead and close that because we're not going to actually work with any Java code here. We're just going to work in XML. Yes, we are going to use an XML. We're not going to do that drag and drop stuff. I ain't about that life. We're going to use XML. We're going to write XML and it's going to look pretty cool. So here we are, our XML file. This is what tells our app what it's going to look like. And for whatever reason, Android Studio defaults to this constraint layout. I'm actually gonna change this to a relative layout and use that in our Android app. So in order to do that, I'm gonna look here at line two and everything before this XML and S, I'm gonna go ahead and delete up to that bracket. And I'm just gonna start typing relative layout and then hit tab to autocomplete. And it's also gonna change the closing tag to relative layout as well. Now, so far, if you wanna preview what your app looks like, you can just go ahead and hit preview here and the preview pane opens. So right now we have this default text view here, which I'm actually going to just get rid of because we're gonna write our own custom text view. So there we go, we are using a relative layout. And what a relative layout is, is that it actually allows you to lay out the child elements. So any elements, text views, image views, whatever you wanna put within this relative layout, you can lay them out relative to one another. So to other child elements or siblings or to the parent itself, which in this case is relative layout. So in order to get our app from this, to this, we're obviously gonna have to change quite a few things. So the first thing I'm gonna do is change this blue background. So let's go back to Android Studio. Well, you see here that we have this little action bar, title bar, whatever it is. I don't want it, so I'm gonna get rid of it. So what I'm gonna do is go up here where it says app theme, and then scroll all the way down and hit no action bar. So that's really good. It got rid of that action bar up top. But if we actually run our emulator right now, so I'm gonna go ahead and choose, I don't know, a 5X, Nexus 5X. And we see that here in the emulator, the emulator just started, the action bar is still there. So what do we do? Well, we close our computers, we give up and we run away. <laughs> no, I'm just kidding. What we actually need to do is, well, we just changed the preview here in XML Previewer, but we actually need to go into our app folder here. So make sure this is Android go to app and then go to our manifests folder and then open this android manifest.xml. The thing is we need to change the theme in the manifest to no action bar. So go back to the manifest file and right here on line 11 we see at style app theme. So I'm actually gonna change app theme to no action bar. So I'm just gonna start typing no action bar and it is this first one right here. So I'm gonna double click that to get it to autocomplete. And now if we run our emulator by hitting the screen button, now we see that the action bar is gone. So that's great. So let's actually go ahead and change our background to blue. So let's go back to activity.main or activity underscore main.xml. And I'm gonna go ahead and just make this a little wider so you can see all the code. And right here, just before this first or this bracket here, I'm gonna start typing Android background and the color code is actually this right here 00a4ff so i'm going to double click that 
or you can just type it in and I'm gonna paste it there. So there is our really nice blue background and we're done with the background. So now what we need to do is we need to add this text view to display hello world and we also need to change the font to make it look like this. So over here, I'm actually gonna start typing out a text view and I'm just gonna let it autocomplete. Now the layout width, I'm gonna do match parent just for the heck of it. What that means is that the text view is gonna be as wide as the parent. So if the relative layout is also match parent, which is matching the width of the screen, then the text view is gonna match that width. So the text view is actually gonna be as wide as the screen is. Now the layout height, I'm actually gonna do wrap content. So it's actually gonna be just as tall as the text inside is. And I'm gonna go ahead and start typing in the text that we want, which is going to be hello world. So Android colon text, autocomplete that. And I'm just gonna start typing hello world. Now you can see over here, we have hello world on one line, but we actually need it on two lines. So what I'm actually gonna do is go up to this world and right before the W, I'm gonna type in backslash N. So that is a new line character. So anytime code sees this backslash N, it's saying whatever's after that end, push it down to the second line or the next line. So there we go, we have hello world showing up there. And if you remember from our image, the hello world is actually down here. So what I need to do to this text view is to lay it out so that it is always at the bottom. And that's the great thing about relative layout. So if I start typing Android, I can start using this attribute called layout underscore align parent bottom. And I'm gonna go ahead and set that to true. And you saw that the text view moved all the way down to the bottom of the screen. Well, what this means is that since we set this equal to true, Android is actually gonna take this text view and align it to the parent bottom. Well, the parent is the relative layout. So it's gonna take this text view and align it to the bottom edge of this relative layout. Cool, so we're getting there. Now also this text is actually different than this text, specifically the font. So the font that I'm actually using in this app is called Spicy Rice. <laughs> and I really don't know why that's so funny, but I actually have it here on my desktop and we need to bring this in into Android Studio. So if you go back to this app folder and then to this resource folder, RES, I'm gonna select this res folder and then right click it and then go down to reveal in Finder. Now, if you're on Windows, I think it's called reveal in Explorer or something like that but you basically wanna open the destination where that folder is located. So I'm gonna go ahead and double click in res. And here, I'm actually going to create a new folder and call it fonts. I'm just kidding, we actually need to name it font for whatever reason Android Studio doesn't like that S. So I'm gonna name that folder font and then when I go back here, you see that the font folder is updated. So let's actually go back here to that font folder. And what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna drag and drop this spicy rice into this folder. So this is a true type font and I'll go ahead and leave the link to this font down below. I actually found this on 1001fonts.com or 1001freefonts.com. I don't know, I'll leave the link in the description. <laughs> So once you have your font in this folder, we can actually go back to our text view and we need to add another attribute. And this attribute is gonna be font family. And you see here in the autocomplete, you can just type in at font spicy rice. So that at font means we're referring to a resource here in the res folder. So there we go, we actually saw the font being updated, but it is way too small. So we need to make that font a little bit bigger. So I'm gonna go ahead and start typing Android text size, and I'm just gonna make it, I don't know, 100 DP. That looks better. What about the color? Let's change the color. So this is kind of like a faded out white. I just want a plain white. So text color is at Android color white. There we go, that looks a lot better. Now sometimes when you import custom fonts, fonts sometimes have their own internal padding, which can sometimes mess up the text views. So we're actually gonna go ahead and get rid of that by typing Android include font padding, and I'm gonna set that to false. I don't want Android Studio to include whatever font padding was already pre-built into this font when I imported it. Cool, so this is looking good. It's looking pretty close to what we have here. 
but you'll notice that the hello and the world is actually pretty close to one another. So we need to decrease the amount of line spacing between these two lines. So if we go back to Android Studio, that gap is pretty big. So I can start typing Android line spacing extra. And since I wanted to decrease the amount of space, I'm gonna go ahead and type negative. And I found that 48 dp works pretty good. Cool, so just a little bit more. The hello world is too close to the left edge of the screen. So I'm gonna go ahead and do padding left and make that about 16 dp. That looks pretty good actually. <laughs> if you haven't done so, you can actually go up here to code and hit rearrange code. So it just rearranges the code in a little bit more cleaner, nicer way. So let's see if this works. It is pretty much done. I'm gonna go ahead and close this preview and I'm gonna go back to this emulator. I need to go ahead and hit run. And there you go. Hello world, this really groovy looking Hello World app. It was pretty simple to make. And I honestly feel like I'm back in the 70s. I'm just kidding, I, I never visit this set. But I hope you guys had fun making this app. I sure did. It was a really fun app to make. If you guys have any questions, leave them in the comments below. And tell me about your creations. You can go ahead and change the font, the color, all sorts of stuff to make some really cool looking text appearances. All right, I'll meet you guys in the comments below and I will see you guys in the next one.